So however you feel, whatever thoughts come, letting everything just be welcome, a welcome guest. As Rumi would say, this guest house, being human. And imagine yourself just like an empty vessel, a clear channel that everything can flow through like leaves blowing around in the wind, but you're not sticky. So the mind doesn't need to grab onto anything that we can just let it sort of be there and pass through the clear channel of your body, mind, heart as best you can. I know sometimes things get sticky, but when you notice it and go, oh, I'm getting sticky. <laughs> And then you try to remember, again, clear channel, open vessel. So we'll spend a, a couple of breaths here in this supported back bend, trying to let the front body soften into the back body and a feeling of your bones descending into the earth, bones to the earth. Hmm. Noticing as you let your attention dance and wander around your body, the whole landscape of you, if there's any places that feel like you're gripping, anything that feels like the, the musculature is in a perpetual on position that you might be able just to dial down. And sort of touch your awareness on different parts of your body and whole swaths of tissue could just just sort of dial it down, let go of the gripping. And especially in the places where you habitually hold your stuff, whether it's the jaw or the belly or the shoulders, wherever it might be. And then just go ahead and press down into your feet. So if your legs are long, you can walk them back in. Press into your feet to lift your hips up and just take the blanket or towel you have underneath you, just slide it out and come down onto your back again. Give your knees a hug into your chest and a little bit of a rock from side to side. Just feeling again, bones to the earth. And now the bones of the low back and all the tendons and ligaments and sinews of the low back can really smoosh into the ground. Um, coming in, I'm just gonna stay low to the ground for a little bit to start with here today, coming into a banana-like shape. So on your back, you could stretch out your legs and stretch your arms up overhead and then just move your right foot like six or eight inches out to the side, the heel stays on the ground, and then cross your left ankle on top of it. And then the upper body will bend in the same direction. It's just a gentle C curve. You can either hold on to your left wrist or if both arms up there feels like too much, you can just bring the right arm down and place it on your belly or on the floor. And then you're inviting your awareness like lava, like liquid light, to pour into the whole left side of your body and try to get that left side instead of rolling up to get the left side to empty down. Just again with that scanning, scanning through the whole landscape and anywhere you notice resistance. And you just bring your loving attention there and ask it to soften even just 1% or 5%. And anywhere that the body resists moving towards the floor, you're trying to get at anything that's moving away from the floor, instead encourage to move towards the floor. And we'll just stay a couple more breaths on this one side. Every ounce of blood, sweat and tears and fluid in your body is dripping, seeping down to the lowest place, seeking the earth, like rain into the soil. And then you can just 
undo that. And as you come back to center, curl up in a fetal position on your left side. So bending knees and bending elbows to roll over onto your left side for a moment to stay. And then with the right arm, draw a big semicircle like a rainbow over your head that peels the chest open towards a twist. And then just go right back the other way. So just drawing some really gentle circles with that right arm. And you could keep it with the fingers if they touch the floor dragging. Could also be interesting to bring your hand to the shoulder and use the elbow to draw a big semicircle opening and closing a few times. Keep going like that, noticing is it the arm that's the doer or could it come maybe even from the rib cage or even deeper from right inside the center of you around your heart center that turns and then maybe drags the arm along and the next time that you open out into that twist just stay there for a moment take a big holy pause a big giant inhale <sighs> exhale the bones to the earth and then as you let that one go, start to pull yourself onto your back and ankle to knee, right ankle is going to cross over the left thigh on your back and you can scoop your hands around behind your left thigh and give your hips a little wiggle from side to side. Just introducing ourselves here to the hips, really friendly, gentle way, nothing too extreme. And then take your hands, you're going to keep the legs the way they are, but just bring your hands around the base of your skull. You can keep your head on the ground though. So just letting your hands and head rest on the ground here. And with your legs, start to make a circle, circle the hips around. And it might be a simple circle, or it might even look like a figure eight and you could change directions at will. So just moving the hips all around, try to keep your belly button down. See if you can imagine your belly button like the heaviest stone that gets dropped into a pond and it just sinks down as the legs move around. So if this is plenty, great. If you want to feel a little, little more, if you want slightly more challenge, you could lift the head shoulders up. Try to keep the elbows wide. Try to let your head rest in your hands so the neck isn't doing all the work here. Maybe the throat could soften a little bit, keep that belly button down and just try to smoosh your back and your hips into the floor for just one more breath. And then happy baby, come onto your back, reach around, you might grab the pinky toe edges of your feet or the ankles or the backs of the thighs, wherever you can hold on to. And then sometimes I know we often like to kind of wobble around here. But then just let it come to a suggestion of stillness. Just find a place where you can just empty and rest. You're holding on, but there's a, a softness about the touch, right? There's some, even though you have to be kind of strong in your hands here, you're strong and soft at the same time. And here you're inviting everything again to move in the direction of the earth. My cats, they never play with toys until I have to teach a yoga class and then they get the little jingle bells out. So I have to go wrench it away from the cat. We can't have that right now, I'm sorry. <laughs> Stay for one more breath, okay, save the toy. <laughs> And then go ahead, let the happy baby go. We'll do all that on the other side. So you can just sort of like any way your body wants to shake it out, take a moment. We're going to start from the banana on the other side. So as you lie down again, stretch your legs out, stretch your arms overhead. The left foot slides away. And you see, it doesn't have to go too far, right? The right ankle crosses on top. And if you felt yourself roll up, you went too far. So adjust it as needed and then take the upper body same way so you just create the shape of a sweet little banana and you're maybe holding the right wrist or the left hand is on your belly and now your attention like liquid gold pours into the whole right side of your body and just empties it out empty empty some intention 
to the hands and the feet that they could soften and be nice and heavy. All the limbs, the heavy creatures of your legs, ah, unclenching, undoing, encouraging everything to soften in the direction of the earth, bones to the earth. And then go ahead and curl up on your right side as you undo the banana coming into a little feel position on the right side. And the left arm is going to do its little dance up and around overhead and pull you open chest towards the sky and then close you up like a little clam again. And you can do that a few times, soft, slow, sort of luxurious movement open and closed and you're just an open vessel you're like a, a river your body's like a river of thoughts and experiences and everything just passing through try to feel it initiate from the rib cage or even from the the deep center of the heart and it could drag the arm with it as the rib cage rotates and then the next time you open, stay open in that twist and just soften all the waters of you. Soften like rain into the earth. And go ahead and come onto your back. Ankle to knee, left foot hooks over the right thigh. And you could start by grabbing a hold around the back of the right leg. Draw the legs in and rock a little bit. I had a teacher, this was probably like 15 years ago, that used to say, this was such a New York thing to say too, like imagine that the floor is a bagel and you're smushing the cream cheese of your low back into the bagel. That image has stuck with me for probably 15 years. <laughs> so you're trying to spread the low back as much as possible, the outer hips, everything, the sacrum, all all of it spread it into the earth take your hands behind your head to start with just keep the head heavy on the ground and circle the hips around in this number four position and you can keep it simple in circles or you can make it more figure eights or any which way change direction randomly at will belly button Sinking like a stone, heavy like an anchor, down to the ground. If you want more sensation, more challenge, you pick up the head, keep the elbows wide, and keep moving those legs around. And then go ahead and just turn that into a happy baby. Reach around for your feet. And you can stick with simple happy baby or there might be a desire to open into a straddle. You can do a little wobbly straddle. Hands can rest anywhere that they fit on inside the legs or on the feet. You could do one leg happy baby and then the other one. And then go ahead and rock your way up to sit. As you do, bring your legs around behind you. No rush. When you eventually get to hands and knees, just take a few cat cows, just a last little bit of warming things up, tuning the instrument here. Yeah, you can take good care of your knees or if you need to, you put something soft under your hands and just let your spine do a little dance around. Intuitive, really intuitive movement, like where does my body want to take me and what does it want to tell me? Your body has some really deep wisdom and it wants to be in conversation with you. It wants you to feel things, to listen. So what is it saying? What wants to be felt? What longs to be moved? Hmm. Go ahead and from here, you can come into a puppy pose. So start to walk your hands out a little further 
and then let your spine just melt like a hammock or a string of pearls just drape it down if you need to you can always put a pillow or block underneath your head it doesn't have to come to the floor or the block it could also just hang in space And then tuck your toes under, if they're not already, and start to walk your hands back. I'm gonna come right into a squat. So your version of a squat as you sit the hips back. Your heels might come down, they definitely don't have to though. And you could wiggle it around a little bit, let your knees wing open and shut a few times. Often think coming into this shape, you know, about how many creatures in the world are able to do this with their bodies, right? It's like you can't really picture an elephant doing this or a bird doing this. So it's really kind of amazing that we can swivel our hips like this and just do these really interesting things and not take it for granted. And then come to a standing forward bend, just straighten your legs to whatever amount they'll straighten. Gather your feet about hip width underneath you and just hang from your legs. If you can straighten the legs, do it. I know sometimes I get like, I tend to just bend them just by habit. So it is interesting also to really try to push into the floor. And there's something to be said for really straightening those legs. Mm -hmm. And then do bend them, bend them quite generously so that you're almost feeling like you're in a standing child's pose where your spine can just really round over the thighs. And then little by little, bone by bone, start to stack the spine and come all the way up to stand. And as you do come all the way up to stand, you can clasp your hands in an interlace behind your back, send your knuckles back your arms up and back, bend your knees and lift your chest. So come to a, a back bend, but you're in Utkatasana. So bending knees, lifting chest, lifting chin a little bit, and then so slow, fold over your legs, feel the outer edges of the belly, kiss the thighs, drop your head, and then you can lengthen the legs again. And how about a little one leg lengthens and then the other one, and your hips can wobble from side to side and your hands still clasped can rock from side to side to welcome some space on the front of the shoulders. If you need to flutter the lips or stick out your tongue or make a big ah, sigh, go for it. And then let the arms just dissolve down, drop your hands, walk it out into a downward facing dog. Give that a little bit of a shake and shimmy to say hello to that one. What's asking to be felt here? What does your body want to tell you? And then roll it out to plank pose and from plank pose, come back to hands and knees. And just a little bit more cat cow action, just dancing that spine around just a smidge more. And then turn that into a puppy pose. Walk your arms out and let your heart soften down. Tail sticks up in the air still. Coming up from puppy, tuck your toes under, walk yourself back right over the feet into squat. You could take the hands in a prayer this time, the elbows gently to the inner knees to help the knees open, and then the heart lift a little bit. And then from there, standing forward, fold, touch the hands down, lift the hips up, bring the feet in a little closer underneath you. And bending knees, roll all the way up to stand. Slow motion, unpacking the spine as you come up. Press down into the feet to make space in the spine. And then hands interlace behind you. Put the other knuckle on top this time. Stretch your knuckles back. Lift your chin, lift your heart, bend your knees. So coming to that like 
Utkatasana, back bend, and then just when you feel like you'll feel it, like you can't go any further. And then you just release the upper body over the thighs, pour like a waterfall, straighten the legs any degree that they'll straighten. Rock the shoulders from side to side, bend one knee and then the other more generously. Let your hands go. Downward dog, take a walk forward or back, whichever way you have to go to get there. And then we're gonna add on from here. So from downward dog, I'm gonna mirror you. Step your right foot forward between your hands. And then take a walk all the way around to the left until you come to the long side of your space and come to like a, a goddess stance with your toes turned out, heels turned in, feet nice and wide. Bring your palms up onto your thighs. Keep your hips nice and low and just sort of rock a little bit from side to side here. Yeah, get the socks off, sticky mat. And then one shoulder at a time, just swing it in and dip. And then come on back through the middle and dip and swing it in, squeezing the twist here. So we used to always say this thing in yoga, like that twists were detoxifying. And then we learned much better that all you have to do is just have a body and it naturally detoxifies. But then we learned again that most of the fluid, the water in our body that carries away waste is, is mostly in a gel form actually. And when we do stuff like this, when we heat up and we squeeze and twist and wring out, that gel becomes more watery. And then things like free radicals and the stuff we don't want in our body gets more easily moved away, passed out through, gone. So it does actually do it. Come to center. Keep your knees bent kind of soft and just take your arms like you've got two clouds in your hands, a cloud in each palm. Slowly lift your arms straight up overhead. And as they come straight up, I know you can't see my head, that's okay, you don't need to. You're gonna then take the arms and press them out, palms facing opposite sides of the room like you're pushing two walls away. And then go ahead and fold forward. Bring your hands to the floor. Now you can play with your feet here and decide which way they wanna turn in or out. Keep your left hand down, I'm gonna mirror you. Reach your right arm up into a twist. Then you can decide, do I want to turn my right toes out? How does that feel? What if I turn the right toes forward and I turn the left toes out? How does that feel? You can let the top arm really wing back behind you. Just go generous with this, generous with the shape, generous with your breath, You're just that open vessel, nothing sticky. It all comes in and out. And then changing sides. So bringing that right hand down, Right hand on the floor, left arm to the sky. So same twist, it's sort of like not quite a regular wide leg twist, it's not quite a twisted triangle, it's sort of in between. So toes can turn any direction, play a little bit, be curious about what your body wants here, what feels good to you. And then as you come back to center, you can come back, put both hands down, heels in, toes slightly out. Imagine you're holding a globe underneath you. You're holding the world in your hands and super slow motion start to stand up and you're just bringing it up or here again, like a cloud. You can imagine a cloud and you're pressing the cloud right up through your body. It's coming up through the belly cloud into the heart. When it gets about heart level, flip the palms up and press it up over your head. Imagine you've got a big, giant, soft, fluffy cloud in your hands over your head. And then we're just gonna hinge at the hips and swing the arms back and fold forward. Whoosh. And then one more time, come straight up, arms high. Same thing, just hinge at the hips, reach the arms back, fold forward. Just drop your hands right here. Walk it back around to the front of your space, downward facing dog. So walk it back around to the right, step on back, downward facing dog. Keeping your downward dog, 
Lift your heels up, swing both heels over to the right and bend your knees. Keep your hands there, just bend and straighten your legs. So your toes are pointing towards the left and you're just bending, knees are pointing to the left and you're just getting kind of squishy back and forth. And then go back through center, downward dog and swing your two heels over to the left. So now your toes and your knees point to the right and you just squish back and forth a couple of times, bend and lengthen, bend and lengthen. And back to downward facing dog. Roll it out into plank pose and just pause there for a moment, clear channel, open vessel, nothing sticky. Touch your knees down, child's pose. Stay a moment. So go ahead and come on up through all fours. Do this all. Last time, same thing. Poppy pose. Walk the hands out. Let the heart melt. Walk your hands back, tuck your toes under, roll right over the feet into squat. Or you might stay in a squat. You could do like we did before, the hands in prayer, or maybe a crow. Maybe you heel toe your feet right together to touch. Bend the knees, tuck your arms underneath, look forward, and try to balance on your hands. But if you're happy in squat, you stay right there in squat. All good from wherever you are, standing forward bend. So hips go up, head goes down. Maybe this time, why don't you go ahead and grab your feet, big toes, peace sign fingers around the big toes. You scoop up your big toes. Take a breath in, send your heart forward. Try to make some room in the spine and then fold into your legs. Let go of the big toes, bend your knees, roll all the way up to stand, hands interlace behind your back. One last time for this one. Knuckles go back, chin and heart go up, knees bent, super, super generous. And then once you start to feel the belly near the thighs, you pour like liquid all the way out and fold forward, little wiggle wobble for a moment. Let the hands go, downward dog, walk it out. And now you're gonna take your left foot, step your left foot up through the hands. Walk your way around to the right, come to wide-legged, facing the side of your space, or you know, whichever way you're facing is good. And then toes turn out, heels turn in, come up with palms on the thighs. And no surprises, so just like we did before, just a little bit of back and forth. If you wanna turn around so you can see too, you can do that, it doesn't matter which side you're facing. So a little back and forth, a little bit, and then squeeze and twist. A little faster this time and you could add a breath to it. So exhaling as you twist. For four, and three, and two, and one, and center. So imagining that you've got those clouds in your hands and you're slowly lifting the arms all the way up overhead. The knees stay soft, the toes are pointed out. So the arms come up and they come down to shoulder height and press away, pushing the imaginary wall. From there, straight or straight-ish legs fold forward. Your feet can turn in or out at will as one hand stays down. Doesn't even matter which one. One hand on the ground, one hand to the sky. Twisting and then moving toes around to see where 
this one feels just right for you. And changing with the other hand up in the sky. And as both hands come down, your toes will turn out. And hold that imaginary cloud underneath you there, palms facing up, soft knees, and then slow motion, bringing it up. You and the cloud become one. You start to move like a cloud, the insides like clouds. When you get to the level of the chest, press the palms up and push it up overhead. And when the arms come fully extended, you can turn your toes more forward and wing the arms back and fold forward. Straight back up, arms to the sky. The last time, wing the arms back and hinge forward. Drop your hands, walk it to a downward dog. So walk around towards your foot, towards your right foot, I think, whichever foot, doesn't matter. Downward dog. And then just like before, keep your hands there. Lift your heels a little bit. Spin your heels to the right, bend your knees. This time, pick up that left hand and just drape the arm, soft elbow, soft wrist. Just let it hang over your head. So like a bendy, soft side plank. <sighs> if you want more challenge, you can try to really anchor the right foot and pick the left leg up into the sky. But it still can be sort of soft. The knee bent, the ankle soft. And then back around through downward dog, calmly and slowly. And other side, so heels will swing left. The knees get nice and bendy. You can stay like that, or you can pick up the right arm and just hang it over your head. Super soft fingers, like five waterfalls, the fingers. And that could be plenty there. Or you could anchor the left foot and try to pick up the right foot and just sort of be just this soft, bendy thing, like a little piece of origami floating through the sky in the wind. And then back to downward facing dog. Take it out for a ride into plank this time. Bring it all the way to the floor, real slow motion. When you get there, you can put your forearms on the ground for sphinx pose. Elbows down, heart broad. Such a noble and dignified pose. Feel your length and your width. Feel the breath global around the back of the heart too and the sides of the heart. Mm. Mm. Go ahead and widen the elbows, let your head come down, bend your knees, windshield away for your feet. Mm. And then you can take a bow pose here. So reaching perhaps for the ankles if you can hold on. If not, you just intend to do that. Reach in that direction. And lifting the whole thing up. Why? Open vessel, clear channel, nothing sticky, just floating. A little speck of dust in the air. You just float. For one more breath, lift up just a touch higher and then put the whole thing down. And you can either make a pillow with your hands or make cactus arms, rest your head, bend your knees, windshield wiper feet again. Hmm. And then coming up to all fours. As you come up to all fours, tuck your toes under and we'll sit back onto the heels with the toes tucked under. I'm gonna do a little dancing camel so you can hold on to one heel. The other arm sweeps up and across and the hips lift any amount. And then you come back down hips to heels to go the other way. So just grabbing one heel at a time and that arm that's reaching up, you can go any amount. It sort of starts in almost like a twist and then it turns into more of a back bend any amount of back bend. 
hand before you bring it back around and change sides and just do a few more of those. <laughs> Maybe going just a, a touch slower than you might be inclined to. Hmm. When you feel like you're even, let's take one right through the middle. And you could start by holding onto the heels, or if you prefer, you could start by kneeling and having your hands like they're in your low back and you could go back that way. So however you like to do your Ushtarasana, your camel, try to keep some softness, some gentleness in the throat. The skin can stay a little bit soft, the whole outline of you just a little bit softer. And then come on out, resting, sitting on your heels. Try not to do anything else for a moment. You can let your palms just rest on your thighs and just clear channel, nothing sticky. In and out it goes, the breath, the thoughts, all of it. And then just sliding your hips over to the side, to the right side on your, you, of your legs. So you have the left leg on top and then move your left leg back and open your knees so that you end up with two right angles here. So you have your right shin in front and your left shin facing back. And then gather your thumbs into your palms and wrap your four fingers around them. So you've got two little fists that you can reach back behind you like aerodynamic wings. And then just lean over that front shin just about halfway. And when you get there, push both legs down into the ground. Really press them down and try to squeeze the bones of your legs with the muscles, wrap the muscles into the bones. You can squeeze your thumbs a little bit too and that invites the whole upper body to join in the shape so it becomes global. The whole body getting engaged here, all the lights turning on in every room in the house. And now to come out, push your right leg down so hard into the ground that you lift your torso up. And as you come up, take your hands in a soft interlace over your heart and just rest your shoulders for a moment, rest your jaw. As you sit up tall here, can you float your right leg straight up off the ground? Oh, and the answer might be no, but you can try. And then to try to do it, we'll do it one more time, but this time just sort of touch your low back and say, hey, you, not right now, okay? You calm down. And let's let the legs and all of those strong ropey muscles around the hips, those are gonna do the work now. So sitting up really tall, trying to come out of the, the muddiness of the low back, let it get bright. And then try to float that right leg up and just hold it there for one breath. And then put it down. Now lean forward just a touch, pressing your left knee into the ground. Try to just lift the left foot and lower the leg up without the knee coming up. So it's internal rotation of that back leg. Ooh, and then put it down and relax for a moment. Sometimes you get a cramp from doing that one. If you do, you can like rub it out. We'll do it one more time. So a little bit of a lean forward. Left knee presses down, left foot tries to come up, even if it's just an inch. And then release. Now sitting really tall, trying to come out of the low back again. We're gonna try to lift, just like float it, like we sprinkled pixie dust on it. Try to lift that left leg straight up off the ground. Oh, it's almost impossible, right? Put it back down. So one more time, tall spine. If you have to lean a little bit, it's totally okay, I have to. Lifting that back leg, slowly bring it around to the front. Bring it slow motion around to the front. And we're gonna cross left thigh, left knee over right knee. And so if this works for your legs, you could do this. You can always open the bottom leg up too. There you go. And if you want to readjust, you snuggle in really well 
and then add a forward fold if you've got some room there. You can just let your body drape over the legs for a few moments. Come on up, coming up and take the feet a little wider than hip width in front and just windshield wiper the knees a few times. Just noticing the difference hip to hip, what's going on, what is your body trying to communicate to you? And then we'll take it over to the other side. So bringing the legs over so that the left shin is in front this time and the right leg is back and you're trying to sit tall and have two 90 degree bends in the legs. Wrap the thumbs up with the four fingers, reach your knuckles back and then just halfway over that front shin. And when you arrive halfway, you press down. Press down with everything you've got in those legs. Wrap muscle into bone, squeeze the thumbs. So every part is invited to participate here. Every inch of your landscape is really bright, vibrating, shimmering, squeezing, pressing, and then push that left leg down so much that it lifts your chest up. Soft shoulders, soft hands. Bring your fingers to the interlace over your heart. And we're gonna try to float first the left leg up. So see if you can just pick it straight up and then put it down and then talking to the low back again, like, okay, I know you wanna do everything, but let's leave it up to the hips this time. And so sitting up really tall, trying to draw yourself out of the low back, try to float that left leg up one more time, stay for a breath, and then put it down, and then leaning just a little bit forward, the right knee is gonna stay on the ground, the right foot and lower leg try to lift up, and put it down. Rest for a moment. I always get a cramp. I always have to <laughs> give some love there. And then one more time, just a slight lean forward, right knee down, right foot up towards the sky. It's like, it looks like not much, right? It's such a silly little thing, but it's so profoundly powerful. And then come on back. And now this time we're gonna put the pixie dust on the right leg and try to just float it up and around to the front. So tall spine out of the low back. Go ahead and lift that right leg up. Slow that heavy creature, pull it all the way around and crossing into Gomukhasana, knee over knee. Arrange it so you can fidget with it to get it to fit you just right. And then when you feel ready, folding forward nice and soft and round. And come on up as you come up, undoing the legs. Come down onto your back. So if there's anything else that your body is craving, now's the time if you wanna take a shoulder stand or a final twist, otherwise we'll start to move in the direction of Shavasana, but give yourself a full minute or so to finish up any last things that your body is, is calling for. No rush, but you can 
Start to think about making a little nest for yourself that you could rest really well for a couple of minutes. And Shavasana could be on your back, but it could also be legs up the wall or curled up on your side. Inviting all parts to move in the direction of the earth, imagining all the water of you seeping down like rain. Get cozy. Allow the back of your heart to be really soft and wide and spread out. Throat soft, a layering of softness in the belly, one more layer of letting go through the belly. You're welcome to stay longer if you like. You could do an extended Shavasana. But if you did feel like coming back, you could start to bring your legs in. Tiny movements, rock the head or blink the eyes. to your side and come up. Again, take your time, there's no urgency. And 
bringing the hands either in prayer or over the heart. We finish with Om, breathing in. Oh. Thank you so much for being with me.